Good morning. So my breed study from Longway Homestead for April arrived and I had promised last time I would open it on camera because of the unique way she packages these. So I'm just going to do that now and then we're going to start spinning it up. So it comes really flat in an envelope like this and, you, and she had said in, the, in an email that they didn't end up having enough of the breed cards for the breed study. So some of us will be getting our breed cards in the next shipment. And I'm one of those. I just have the, the, what do you call these, business cards. And, you know, four ounces of Wensleydale wool. Please note that this sheep has some Cotswold genetics, which adds a slightly longer staple link. Okay, that's good to know. So she ships them, like, in a compressed bag and all the air sucked out. So it's vacuum packed in here, super tight and small so that she can ship it really cheaply. And then when I cut it open, it'll start inflating almost immediately. It's really funny. Let's see, let's cut right about here. And you can't hear it, but it makes a little hissing noise as it immediately starts inflating. All right. Toss that. It's a really nice gray color. And the string is to show where the end is. Usually, well, I've only this is only my second one, but my first one, I unwound it into a new spinning ball, so it would fully inflate before I started spinning and get all the air back in there, and not be as compressed. Because you can still see it has the edges where it was compressed. But yeah, it's just a really cool way of shipping them. Honestly, it saves a lot of time and money for everyone involved. I'm sure. So I'm going to get this finished prepped for spinning and I will meet you at the wheel. Thank you. Wensleydale breed study for the Longway Homestead breed study. I think it was the one, I guess it's the one for April because they end up coming like towards the end of the month, so that makes sense. Just because of how long it takes for shipping to get from Canada to here. So, this is what I got. Hope you can see it. So, it is four ounces of roving turned into 144 yards of two ply. Now I went with two ply because Wensleydale is a long wool, which means its strength would be in drapiness. If I want to encourage drapiness, usually two ply is a better option than three ply. Three ply for me works better for like cables, things where I want a lot of stitch definition. So for those I would use three ply if I'm doing like a really crimpy yarn, merino, down breeds, those sort of things. The long wools, I usually do a two ply. So it's, and it, it hasn't been washed yet, so I can't say for sure how drapey it will be, but I can tell you just a few things about how this came out. So the first thing is that I'm not going to be dyeing it because it's already such a natural, pretty gray heather, which I really like. And it's really hard to see on camera, but there's just so much color variation in the skein. It's really lovely. Second would be 
when you're spinning any long wool, you don't want to overspin. And it's really easy to overspin because the staple length is so long. Because then what you'll end up with is gross rope. Now this does not feel overspun. This is actually reasonably soft for what it is. Um, it's a little too prickly for next to skin, I'd say. Which brings me to point number three. Because it was a roving prep instead of a smoother prep like, say, top. Um, it's a lot hairier than some of the other Wensleydales I've spun. That hasn't, that's not a flaw. It's a different type of yarn. I think you can see it. It ends up with kind of like a halo to it instead of a smoother finish. Now this is just another way of making yarn. Sometimes you want a fluffier finish because for a lot of objects, the fluffiness traps more air, resulting in a more warm finished object, like a more insulating layer. Or maybe that's just what you want to go for. Maybe you're weaving something and you want to have kind of a fuzzy appearance. In that case, a roving would probably work better for you than top or more commercially processed fibers. Commercially processed, even if they say they're roving, they tend to be thicker and more aligned than the smaller mills. Like this is from a fairly small-ish mill. So it's a lot more of a rustic prep. It still has little bits of EM that fall out as I spin, stuff like that. Not very much, just like the normal amount. Uh, what was I saying? I kind of got off track. Right, okay. So it's a fluffier finished yarn. More like, like a, how you would see a mohair. I have a Gotland I spun that came out similarly with a fluffy finish, so I might use them together. They're different colors, but they're still within the more neutral palette, so they might actually work out together pretty well. And they're both two plies around the same weight. <laughs> they just happen to be. I don't really choose what weight breed studies come out as. I'm not trying for a specific goal. It's usually more as I'm spinning it, I try to see what the wool naturally wants to draft into. Some wools naturally easily draft finer, some naturally easily don't. <laughs> this one's pretty middle of the ground. I I would say once it's washed, it'll probably be DK weight. Probably. It's hard to say with long wools because they don't puff up the way the other ones do. Not usually anyway. It is an airier prep so it might pluff it might puff up a little bit. So yeah, I don't know what the breed study for next month is yet. I haven't been informed, so it's going to be a surprise. I'm excited, though. Um, I still have Spunky Eclectic coming anytime within the next few days. <laughs> it's already shipped, and we're in the same state, so anytime now. And Paradise Fibers comes at the beginning of... I guess it is May now, beginning of the month. So we'll how, the, sorry, we'll see both of those soon, and I'll post videos as I work on them. And I guess that's it for spinning videos for today. Thank you so much for watching.